frighten you! Frighten you! You don't even need to be frightened! I'm frightened to be fucking there trying to get a job! Or I'm a <laughs> It's been going really bad for the last three years. You've been getting um, where it used to be hiding with his hands, you know, or feet even. Now he's gone weapons he uses and all. Uh, he's petrifying the children. He's dragged them out of their beds just to see it going on and all, to bring them into it. Um, the the middle boy was on uh, tranquilizers. He lost his hair and all he did to worry, you know, he was on um, tranquilizing things. He was that frightened. Then I had a hysterectomy last November and he started the mental abuse the day I got home from hospital and I went away to convalesce for a few days and when I went back, two days after I went back, he kicked me in the face and threatened to do certain sexual things. You should talk There's, about rape. Yes, rape within marriage. It isn't an offence for a husband to rape his yeah. wife. So um, he just used to sort of get on top of me and he knew I didn't want to. So he just forced me to and hit me at the same time. And then get off me and then say, well, F you, you black bastard. And then come back in the morning, because it's been a bit upset to be out all day, it was raining with a baby. And he'd come back in the morning as if no, it's happened. So I went to see the psychiatrist, presumably in my own mind, to see if there was anything I could do to save my marriage. And Mr. Edwards just turned around and he said, well, what about women's aid? And I sort of looked at him and said, women's aid? He said, yes, they have a refuge for battered wives. In and I said, but I haven't been battered. I said, he's never hit me. And he looked at me and he said, physically, no, my dear. He said, well, but what about mentally? It was his birthday and he took the last £10 out of my purse. But I knew what was going to happen when he came home at the end of the night. And I just got to the stage where I thought, well, this is it. And I don't know why I eventually done it, because as I say, for 10 years I wanted to do it, but something just clicked in me. And the only thing I took was my boy's pyjamas in a carrier bag and just went. Well, I came from London and I had some quite nasty experience down there that put me and the kids in danger. It wasn't just fists and whatever, it was a gun and that, so I was really petrified. Never knew what frightening was then, and I just got out of the way. I thought myself, better a live mother than a dead one, you know. So I decided that I'd barricade the door so that he couldn't get back in, which I did put a big settee up against the front door and a fridge and a cooker up against the back door. And I rang my friend to told, tell her what I'd done, you know. So she said, well, she was going to get in touch with the police. So then she rang them, they rang me back, and they said, would I be, be prepared to go to a place of safety? Which I said, yes, not knowing what it was. I hadn't thought about it. It didn't occur to me what it would be like, except it was somewhere I could go, and I wasn't going to get beaten. I mean, as I was going down in the police car, I imagined a, a big building with about, oh, I don't know, about 10 rooms and about 20 beds in each bedroom and bars on the window and there'd be a warden there. You know, it was some sort of prison, I think. And when I actually got there, it was just an ordinary house. And they were... Women's Aid in Wales has grown quite dramatically over the last 10 years. Um, when we started off with just one refuge in South Wales and now we have nearly 30. And if we work out that each refuge possibly holds a minimum of four women, then over the whole country at any one time we're probably accommodating 140 women and twice that number of children. My methods in Bilman are Dalaith Gledig and the other flower moi on Vantation. I had with Prinder Guasanithai to the Vauni Karaith. I can give her more heads and call it Kira, and I'm not my hen and a honeki at the anastereino. 
Dan yn cymar sy ferched yn ymwybodol iawn o'r anawster a bennig hyn sydd yn mynebu'r ardaloedd gwledig. Ac roedd yn iangen sefydlu llawer mwy o grwpiau cefnogaeth yn mwyn sicrhau y gall merched droi ati nhw am gymorth neu gyngor ac am gefnogaeth gyffredinol. Ac yn y gystal yn mwyn sicrhau hefyd y bydd cyhoeddusrwydd yn cael ei roi i'r ffaith fod trai sy'n digwydd ym mhob agwedd ar fywyd mewn pentrefi bychain, mewn trefi mwy, mewn ffermydd unig, ym mhob agwedd ar fywyd gall merch gael eich amdrin a'i chyro. I picked up the bus there to go into Aberystwyth. Obviously, to sort of bring everything I wanted to bring out with me over the three fields was just a physical impossibility. So, Women's Aid brought me back on the Friday with a police escort. So the policeman and the two ladies from Women's Aid and myself lumped everything we could into a big wheelbarrow and pushed it up the steep bank across these fields right out to where the cars were on the road. It was far too wet to get a car down here that particular day. When we got there, the kids turned around and said to me, Mam, it's not posh. I said, no, I said, but it'll do. And they kept saying, well, they don't like it. But uh, they went to bed then. I stopped up till about three in the night talking to the women. In the morning, the women were there straight away giving the kids breakfast. And I felt relieved. You know the telephone's there. You know, if any man comes causing trouble, you can pick up the phone or the other women will say, oh, well, it's all right, leave it to us, we'll handle him, whilst you're settling in. At my mother's, as I say, he was coming outside and things like that, and I was terrified to leave my mum's. At the refuge, I knew he didn't know where I was, so I felt relieved for the first time I could sleep for, you know, sleep easily. When I was in the refuge, I was talking to another woman about this, you know, you know and she was saying to me that her husband um, was very fussy about boiled eggs. And she'd be boiling the eggs, and she'd be more or less doing the same things, praying that he would be right. But when we were talking about it in the refuge, it was, we used to say up late talking, and this was about two o'clock in the in early, morning, early hours in the morning. We were saying about it, and we just started really laughing, we found it really funny, all the, all the tension had gone out of it, all the strain, you know. And I think, my God, did I really do that, you know? And it's nice to know that other women were scared over simple things like that, like that, like their food being cooked tidy. The best thing is that it gives women a confidence back and a breathing space. The worst thing is that it's very overcrowded and uh, quite, you know, quite a few, lot of kids, and it's very hectic at times. Hectic? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not too bad. There's nine families, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because there's nine women, nine families. The kids get on top of each other, so if they don't get out, it's going to be murder for, you know, it's murder for us, see? Oh, well, Yvonne comes around, you know, our, our helper, and in between they've got the toy library, so they're dashing downstairs to play the toys and that. And she had a volunteer helper, but she needs a few more helpers, really. She does cope quite well. She's, you know, for the amount of kids she's got to look after. Well, Lee, my youngest one, he used to wake up in the night screaming when I was at home and uh, crying hysterical. He didn't know where he was. When we moved in the refuge, it happened twice, and then it hasn't happened since. It stopped. So therefore, his mind it's better, you know. They go a lot better, yeah, in myself and the children, knowing that the children are not so frightened as well. Yeah, we're a lot easier. It's not home, but uh, <laughs> it does, <laughs> yeah. I went back voluntary for two and a half years, and then the job came up for part-time refuge worker, which I applied for and was successful. I didn't think that I'd get the job that I'm in now, 
because I had no O levels or A levels, but because I'd been through the refuge and experienced what the women are going through, was one of the main reasons. They're here to give you support and advice. They help you with the council, DHSS. They wouldn't put pressure on to leave your husband. They will advise you, or maybe a woman just wants to talk to somebody. A lot stay a week or two weeks, then go back, and then they come back again, you know, and then they have another think about it, and they usually stay. Well, the majority of women in this one have been young. And someone said a few weeks ago, it's surprising the older women are starting to come into refuges now. Yeah, we get women from all, all walks of life. Um, whose husbands have got all types of different jobs, professional men, labourers, you name it, it, it goes on right through all age range. We've had young girls in 16, and when I was in myself, we had a woman of 80 came in. So it's right through the whole age group. I did all the first time on my own, with just family support, going to solicitor, we housed, um, social security, all that, single payment. I did it all on my own. But I think that if you, if you haven't got support from somebody else, it does become very easy to take them back. You can sort out which direction you're going. I knew I wouldn't go back to my husband. It'd take me so long to make the break. It would have all been in vain. It would have been a waste. So I'm, um, I'm building a new life with my children. Yeah, I think you do need the support of other women. It makes you stronger, make you realise that it's not only happen to, happening to you, it happens to other women, and that you can get a better life. You haven't got to stay and put up with it. an information centre where women can come in um, and sit down quietly, have a talk with somebody, get uh, information on legal protection against violence, welfare benefits or whatever it is that they actually need to know about at the time. And we look upon this as a preventative um, way of working because if a woman can come in here and sort things out then maybe she doesn't need to go into the refuge and actually become homeless. A lot of women seem to think it's the last resort, but given my time over again, it would be the first place I would go to. Um, and I think a lot of women are starting to come in now. Before things get so bad, they're coming in for advice on what they can do about getting rehoused, um, getting injunctions, without actually coming into the refuge. Myself, I thought it was an isolated occasion. You know, I thought it would be the one, the one belt. He was pushed a bit too far. Uh, I don't know. I had a guilt complex. I thought that I had done something wrong. I automatically thought I was to blame for the belt. So, until it got to the stage where it was um, a weekly occasion. Then, and, you know, it used to be a uh, Friday night, Friday night, <laughs> sort of. You know. Um, Sit there with his stomach churning, waiting for it. Pussyfooting around, living on a knife edge, wondering what do I say you know, when he comes in? Will it be the wrong thing? Shall I get his supper ready? Because if I do, it'll be the wrong thing. And if I don't, that'll be wrong. You end up living, living in fear. I don't know, you're getting a rat in his heart to get out. It really is difficult to get out. So I hid a lot. I uh, pretended, oh, how many cabins I bumped into? God only knows. You know, I, I fell down stairs and a lot of things, yeah. I think the only time that I really thought seriously of getting it was when it started to affect the children. I think if I would have take it, taken it, still be taking it. He'd uh, wake in the morning and he'd look at me as if someone else had come in the middle of the night and battered me, you know. He'd <laughs> have the black eyes and God says, and he'd look at me as if to say, well, would, uh, did I do that? And then we'd have the, the crying and the sorry and he'd never do it again and he was going to be good and... Full as we were, full as I was, you believed him, you do. 
you feel a failure if you give up and walk out. I wouldn't walk out because it was my home and I'd worked hard for it, so I never had. I never would have walked out. I know I have now. <laughs> Now, my husband is putting on, in a claim on the property, which means till the actual divorce comes up, I can't turn around and sell it. I can't move away. So I'm stuck in here, in the village with him. But I felt inadequate because I couldn't provide them with a home of their own. We've been sharing a bedroom here for nearly five months now. And it's awkward for them and it's awkward for me. But it couldn't seem to get it across to the council. They're all right, they've got their houses. They don't have the strain, because it can be a strain living in a refuge. Because you've got other people to consider. It's not just yourself. You've got other people's kids to consider, which can be a, you know, a, a lot of pressure. I wrote to the councillors in general and I did state in it, if they thought they were going to browbeat me into going back to Wrexham, to go back to a violent household, there was no way I was going to do it. Not just for my own safety, but for the safety of my 12-year-old. I think they like to pressurise you to a certain extent to see if you'll go back. But if you do, you'll probably end up in another refuge somewhere else. You've got the same problem again. What did you feel when you heard you got the house? I kept saying, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. I was jumping up and down. Because up to then I'd felt inadequate. And what about people who are frightened to leave because they don't want to leave the house and everything they've built up? That is that is really hard decision. I can't really... A woman herself can only make that decision in the end, like I did. I mean, after all, what what's furniture? You can always have that again later. Did you lose everything? Yeah, everything. But now I've got everything I want. I got respect, self-respect for myself now, whereas I never did before. Um, I'm more confident and independent. And I know if I aim for something, I'll get there if I'm determined. I'm a voluntary treasurer. That means I don't get paid for it. <laughs> Everyone thinks you might do, but they don't. I report to a, our management committee on what we spend out and how much money we got in the bank, basically every two months. I started getting my confidence back by going to the meetings within our group, to the management meetings there, and... Um, listening to what was going on. I don't always understand a lot of it when you first go because they talk about urban aid and things like that, which you don't understand. But the more you go, the more you listen, the more you pick up. And from then, I was asked if I wouldn't mind being the county de delegate, and I said yes. And I've been now for just over a year. Well, Welsh Women's Aid is our national organisation which supports and aids and advises our smaller groups all throughout Wales. Also does a lot with um, conferences, setting up training schemes. I went to a day training on incest about a week ago and these are things that are hidden away. You don't really... It happens, but people don't talk about it. Uh, by, by going to a, a day like this, it's discussed, it's brought out into the open, makes you more aware of what is going on. My husband has a conviction for incest and paedophilia. But it was believed that this was just a once-off thing while his first marriage was going ast astray. Well, I was very, very rocky, numb, dazed. The, the truth suddenly penetrated in the women's aid refuge for the first month, six weeks. I had the most fearful nightmares of everything my husband had done or ever threatened to do. I didn't get a... In fact, I was took to sleeping during the day because I was so frightened of nodding off and having another one of these nightmares at night.
Well, I think the only thing that you really can do is to get an injunction. But um, it does offer some protection. Because if, if they break it, they can go back. You take it back to court and uh, the judge decides then what's going to happen. He could get a prison sentence because of breaking it. If you've got a power of arrest on the injunction, then the police can pick them up that night. But if there's no power of arrest, it means just taking it back to court. We've tried to burn the house down, and we've put uh, things through the letterbox and burn, you know. You've tried, he's tried setting the place of light while he's walked in, you know, he's lit the curtains and gone as well else. Uh, it's, he's, well, he have tried to kill us all many a time, yeah. The police don't want to know anything unless it's got a powder of rest, and most judges won't give that. How many times have you been, have you applied for injunctions? I must have applied for injunctions about six times and only got one. All the others were undertakings. But since we've been divorced, every time that you've hit me, I've been, is it been, you know, well, a hospital job, I've been admitted for a week or so. Because, um, well, name the injuries, I suppose. Uh, he broke both arms, he broke my jaw twice, um, my nose like a few times, um, all my ribs. Uh, I don't know, I've run out of um, no injuries, yeah. Well, it got to a stage where um, David didn't take any notice of um, whatever legal things I had. So the, the Women's Aid decided to set up a rota because we knew he would, he would back out of prison and we knew he would eventually come. So a rota was set up where two women every night stayed with me and this went on for nearly two weeks. And this is the sort of support that I'm talking about. You would, I don't think you could get that from any other organisation. I think that's why he keeps on with us, because he got no one else. His family don't want him, nobody wants him. So we were stuck with him, so we ran. And he used to say, call your mummy slag, Martin. And one morning I got up and he says, you're slag, mummy. When I was in the refuge and the women would come in and talk, start talking to me and they'd say, oh, you wouldn't believe me. If he came by here now, he'd be ever so nice in it. And I'd say to him, yes, OK, it's the same type that I lived with. But a lot of women are afraid that people won't believe them because they are so nice to other people. When they're outside the home, they're absolutely charming. They're like two different people. If I'd have an iodine or something off my husband, I wouldn't go to work. I was too ashamed, too ashamed. I never went to the doctors or anything because I just felt really ashamed. I think people think they deserve it or she's enjoying it, that attitude. And a lot of it, the four figures aren't known, are they? He wasn't of the opinion that we got married. He was of the opinion that he bought me, you know. It was, it was, so even when we were divorced, he still, he still thinks that I'm his property. You ask a man, you know, what they think a woman's role is, he'll tell you, you know, she's to look after me, clean for me, cook for me, just do what I say. I mean, I always used to say I was lucky that he loved me, cos if he hated me, I'd be dead. <laughs> Women's Aid uh, wouldn't be able to exist without volunteers. Really. I mean, in Cardiff alone, we've only got the one refuge. We could fill four easily, but there's not the workers and there's not the money to do it. Funding is very, very difficult. We can't get... We got it for this year at the moment, till 86. But with things are going on, the funding is going... And it's difficult to get funding. So we can't see us running refuges and information centres, which is badly needed. Per person in bed and breakfast, the lowest you can have is eight pounds a night. And last year alone, Cardiff Women's Aid saved the housing department and social services over £54,000. Until the time when the whole world realises that women are not in a marriage to be harmed physically or mentally, we'll always need a refuge. It was hard as we all know 
To take the step to get up and go To find the courage to finally flee Leave our homes and security Too many awful unjust fights Too many blows and too many nights After the times of being afraid We took our chance, the decision was made We all know and we all care Cause your feelings we all share We'll help each other start again Begin our lives as new women We are no longer all alone We are not weak, we are not strong We are together and so we'll be In love with life and living free Of one thing we are now sure No more abuse must we endure Our lives now can be rebuilt Without pain and without guilt We all know and we all care Cause your feelings we all share We'll help each other start again Begin our lives as new women We all know and we all care Cause your feelings we all share We'll help each other start again Begin our lives as new women We all know and we all care Cause your feelings we all share We'll help each other start again Begin our lives as new women We all know and we all care Cause your feelings we all share We'll help each other start again Begin our lives as new women